Watch your step, hold your nose, and do mind the traps. If that's how she takes a spear, I can see why they call her Titanborn. Oh, hello. It is love at first sight, no? <laughs> yeah, Lyris is still getting stabbed back there. Ooh, you slut. A new jerkin and a lockpick. Anyways, I'm your host, B.R. Brainerd, and welcome back. Did you know that feline AIDS is the number one cause of death for household cats? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for Fur Hoodie 2.0! You know, it's not as bad as I would have thought. It beats the hell out of that potato sack we were wearing. Alright, onward. We're gonna gracefully allow Lyris to set off every trap. There it is. Believe me when I say I don't even have to work to set that up. It's just one of the funny things about the game's design. Alright, assuming the surreptitious fondling stance, here comes my first victim. Ow, look at his health. And then we just have to execute. So yeah, backstabbing with a two-hander is pretty good. I still wager that night blades are better off with one-handed weapons. <laughs> Keep it together, VR. Anyways, as near as I can tell, <laughs> weapon selection isn't all important. If I have a better two-hander in my inventory, I'll use it. And for those of you that want to play with bows, I think it's perfectly viable. Hmm, I wonder what's back here. I'm betting a lot of players haven't checked back here. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, mon chéri. Let's get you out of that dress. Ooh, speak of the devil. Alright, let's go into the inventory here and give you guys a taste of what ranged combat is like. The prophet's cage should be just ahead. Quickly now, we haven't much time. Empty, empty. Well, this room has already been thoroughly violated. I wonder where all the other players are. Maybe this room is completely instanced. What do you think, Lyris? Alright, the good news is we made it here in one piece and the Prophet looks unharmed. Now the bad news. It's going to be up to you to keep him safe and get him back to Tamriel. I'm not going with you. Oh, so no scootily pooping? Uh, Alright, where are you going then? I probably should have mentioned this before, but it never seemed like the right time. There's a trick to opening the cell. The only way for a prisoner to leave is for another living soul to take their place. I need to swap places with the Prophet. And we were gonna have a whole litter of kittens together. Everything about you screams recurring NPC, lady. There must be another way. Believe me, I wish there was, but... I don't see anyone else here with a beating heart, do you? If Molagbal isn't stopped, he'll destroy everyone and everything we've ever loved. The Prophet chose you for a reason. Get him to safety. Okay, I'm over it. I'll be there are magical locking devices on either side of the cage. You need to deactivate both of them so I can begin the transfer. Once it's done, get moving. The Prophet will know where to go, but he'll need your eyes and your protection. Always a button to push. I'm so glad I can be useful. And you notice how there's never just one thing to activate? That's the MMO difference. Why she even needs me here to push these things will remain a mystery. Time to make like Mirror's Edge and sprint around the inside. You can probably tell I've done this quest before. Of course I'm going to court certain death by jumping up and down next to a bottomless chasm. I'm just gonna shave a second, maybe a second and a half off the quest completion time. I give myself that the Prophet might be free! Don't worry, Lyris. We totally won't forget about rescuing you. Ooh, shiny. Well, that was a bum trade. Literally. Can we get a do-over? I mean, this model smells like wet cabbage, and there's a clear lack of breasts. Thank the divines you are safe. There is that, at least. There is sacrificed everything that we might go free. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. Can we find a way to take her with us? I wish that were possible. But I promise you, once we escape Cold Harbor, we will find a way to rescue her together, Vestige. Well, I'm sure the prison cells in Hell are comfy. They're known for that. So why are you calling me Vestige? Is that my rapper name? Is that what this is all about? That is the name I have given you. You are but a trace of your former self, a soulless one, an empty vessel, 
that longs to be filled. It is as the scrolls foretold, but not exactly as I imagined. Praise be to Hubbard. So why does Lyris call you the prophet? That is what I've come to be called. My true name is lost even to me. Years of torment have taken their toll. Quickly now, we must make haste to the anchor. Harry Potter? No. Gandalf. Yes, I think my name was Gandalf. You know, I could have used magic to clean up Hogwarts, but I liked making Mr. Finch bend over. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. Anyways, what's this anchor all about? The anchors are Daedric machines of the darkest magic. Their chains bind our world and pull it towards Cold Harbor. I can use one of these anchors to return us to Tamriel, but you must lead me to it. So this guy is blinder than the Batman from reading the Elder Scrolls, but he's still gonna step on fewer traps than Lyris did. Really, when you get down to it, we were doing you a favor, Lyris. Having so many adventurers over the years has really screwed up Tamriel, hasn't it? Murder has become just about the only freely available source of wealth and upward mobility. And I can't help but feel that it's made all the villagers in the world dependent, because most of the ones you speak to need your help with even the most basic tasks. They're just waiting around for a hero to swoop in and solve all of their problems. Probably because the entire history of the continent is about a hero doing exactly that. Usually with an epidemic of theft mysteriously following in his wake. Oh Jesus, creep me out. Empty. Empty. This is gonna take some getting used to. Empty. The insects fight back! How amusing! And yet, so very sad. Ah, it was, it was all his idea. Cthulhu Fatang, sir? Hello? Alright, finally time for some bow combat. That does not do a lot of damage. Yeah, with the long draw speed and the little amount of damage that it's doing, I think my DPS has noticeably gone down. But for those of you who are interested in fighting with bows, at the very least, most of the time it does let you avoid damage, so it's got that going for it. And a lot of these attacks are dodgeable, so I imagine that people who focus on range will get pretty good at that. And it does take a fair amount of skill to do that. Yeah, she just hit me right through the pillar. So I wonder if pillar humping will be a thing of the past in PvP. Dodging costs you stamina, and I think it has a cooldown so you can't just dodge everywhere you go. And pretty much everything this creature throws at you, you can dodge, but you have to time it just right. Ah, so our skill points are going up, because we just earned experience. How it works in the Elder Scrolls Online is a little different. When you gain XP, the game considers what armor and weapon you have equipped, as well as what skills you have bound to your hotbar. It makes me wonder if you can change your loadout whenever you're about to turn in a quest and manipulate your skill gain that way. Got any pro tips? The Dark Anchor's portal is high above us. I will prepare a spell to lift us to it. But first, you must reattune yourself to Nern in order to regain your physical form. To do this, you will need a sky shard. I'm sorry, a MacGuffin what? A shard of ethereal magicka that carries the essence of Nern, some linked them to Lorcan, the missing god of creation. If you collect and absorb its power, it should restore your corporeal form. I will summon one of these shards for you to absorb. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if my mom would like me absorbing soul shards from strange men. Shard of Aetherius, fall upon us now and anoint us with your blessing. There, quickly, collect the sky shard. Okay, so he can just summon one of these because shut up he can. Ooh, this feels good. Well, I, I know a third of a skill point. I don't suppose you could conjure up about 50 more of those, could you? It is time. If we are to return to our own realm, we must act quickly. All right, which button do you want me to press? First, you must activate the anchor. Good I grief, stop shouting, I'm right here. From two devices on either side of me. Activate both devices. I will begin the ritual that will pry open the jaws of oblivion and allow us to escape. Well, I guess this is what happens when you record things in different takes, probably separated by days. One minute he's speaking in a normal indoor voice, and the next he's speaking like he's on the deck of a ship in the middle of a thunderstorm. There is no way to know for sure. In fact, it's extremely unlikely we will both arrive at the same location. 
Fear not, I will find you again when the time is right. Now go, activate the devices. All right, first I will push the first button. And then I will push the second. What do you think the odds are that the dirty old bastard just disappears after this? I mean, it's not gonna happen, because RPGs don't work that way, but it would be pretty tragicomic if he just peaced out. Great Akatosh, dragon god of time, your children are lost in the fog between worlds. They cry out for mercy. This is so fucking metal. Hear my voice, Akatosh. I require your strength. Let the way be opened. Let these wandering souls return home. Let the will of Molog Baal be denied. Alright, so this place was hilarious earlier back in the beta. You'd fly up through the portal, but it wouldn't load the next area, so you'd just fall back down and die on the stairs. <laughs> There were about 40, 50 bodies spread out all over the staircase, and even more living players wandering around spamming the GMs with tickets. It was great, I wish I could show it to you. Don't worry though, this game has still got plenty of bugs for me to show you. Let's go check them out. <laughs> 